Welcome to Lacey's Family Farm. In previous years, we've hosted Open Farm Sunday at our farm, but with this year's current COVID restrictions, we're unable to do that. So we've decided we're going to do a virtual farm tour for you. Uh, we're hoping to film various different bits on the farm and show you what we do. Hopefully you'll learn something and uh, we hope that you enjoy the film. Lacey's Family Farm is a mixed farm in the Chilton Hills. We farm about 450 acres uh, and we have dairy cows, beef, chickens and arable. Um, the cows are all pedigree Guernsey cows and every cow has been born and reared on our farm. Um, beef is a mixture of uh, Guernsey beef, Aberdeen Angus and Belgian blue and we grow grass, winter barley, spring barley and maize as the crops are more fair. These are the highs. There's 49 in this group and they are the ones that most recently calved. They would have calved in the last three months and they give the most milk. They give about 50 litres of milk a day and they have a special ration which will make sure that they've got lots of protein so that they can produce the most milk that they can. A cow will stay in the highs for three months and then they will go into the lows. The lows stay out 24 seven in the summer and then they'll come in in the winter in their shed. Cows will stay roughly in the lows for about six months before they then go into the dries. A cow when they are dry is basically when they have a vacation so they go out in the field for two months they enjoy themselves for a little while and then come back in in their last two weeks before they calve so we can keep a close eye on them so we put them in the shed we'll look at them every day we'll feed them a special blend at night and this will make sure that they have all the vitamins and minerals they need before they have their calf they will then calve down they will stay with the calf for 24 hours before they go back into the highs and then the routine starts all over again we grow three different crops on the farm, the main one being grass which we use for silage and grazing. We grow forage maize which is fed to the cows during the winter and we grow this which is winter barley. Now, there's multiple reasons to grow this. We'll harvest at the end of July, we'll harvest this grain and we'll use that, we'll roll it and feed it back to the cows. We'll harvest the straw which is a stem and we'll use that as bedding for the cows all winter. Um, also it works in for the rotation so we want a rotation of our ground so that we can grow one crop and then we'll change to a different crop after so we'll grow grass for five years then we'll grow barley for a year um, and that will we'll cultivate the ground we can add nutrients in the form of muck um, and we're improving soil structure all the time and then we'll grow maize which is another crop which is we'll add a lot of muck on which is a hungry crop um, so all three of them will serve different purposes for what we need from them and also how they look after the soil so all of this field we've got um, about 100 acres of barley this year. Uh, this will all be ready to harvest at the end of July. So nature and the environment and the role our farm has in that is very important to us here. Um, so there's multiple things that we'll do to help encourage, whether it be wild birds, wild flowers, um, native species, all sorts of different things. So around the farm, we've got miles and miles and miles of hedges. We've actually got more hedges now than we have ever had at, at any point in history. Um, and we have different cutting patterns for these to allow different things to flower, different birds to nest, um, and things like that. So we've got over nine miles of hedges across the farm. Um, we've got a lot of woodland boundaries. We've got a lot of trees in the field. Um, we've planted wildflower mixes. We spent the winter feeding supplementary tree feed to wild birds to encourage things like yellow hammers and corn buntings. Um, and we've also got uh, owl boxes, kestrel boxes, um, that we've been putting up with the help of Borg in the last few years, um, Ambition Barn Owl Group. And so in the tree above us here is a barn owl box that we've got. Um, and that's just one of the things that we're doing to try and encourage nature and wildlife across our farm. So this crop here is forage maize and this is quite an amazing crop because this is what it looks like at the moment. So we're at the 14th of May now. This was planted five days ago and already the seeds germinated but it's got masses and masses of growing to do. So by the end of August this crop that's bare at the moment will be about eight foot tall and then by the end of September we'll be harvesting and we'll get about 
15 to 20 tonnes per acre of crop. So we've got 54 acres of crop in the ground this year and that will be used to feed the cows all through the winter. So it grows very quickly, it wants warm wet weather um, but it's very very hungry. So all the muck and manure that we've produced from the cows last winter we've then spread onto this ground, we've then ploughed it in and it's got all the nutrients there ready to feed this crop. So once it starts it's going to grow rapidly, we're going to produce massive volumes and then we'll harvest the end of September and yeah that'll be our that'll be our food for the winter. Because we're a dairy farm the most important crop we grow is grass. Um, so we're planting specific varieties of grass. So here we've got Italian rye grass um, to, to gain maximum yield. So we're looking for yield, we're looking for quality, proteins, sugars, um, so that the cows will take the most benefit they can from all the grass they eat. So this field here was planted last autumn. Um, we are a, a about to start cutting it for the first time so in 10 days time we'll cut all of this this will all get silaged which is basically pickling and this will be stored for winter feed six weeks after that we'll then take a second cut off of it um, and that will then get added to the to the first lot and be stored for winter feed and then three weeks after that cattle will come down here and graze so kind of by by July this will be full of cattle grazing um, and they'll be here out here all the way through till November when they come inside again and then these fields will get shut up they'll get grazed by sheep over the winter which will tidy them up lovely um, and then the cycle will start again and we'll, we'll chain harrow, we'll roll, we'll aerate we'll add fertilizers all to produce another good crop of grass again next year so this crop of grass will be what well, it'll be down or it'll be growing for five years and then after five years the good quality grass will have run out um, and we'll plough this up, we'll add muck and then we'll plant our winter barley or our forage maize and that's what our rotation is to improve the, the ground quality all the time. These are the calves. So they are like, kept with their mum for 24 hours before we pen them up with other four other calves. They are kept in groups of five and we do this for social interaction so they learn behaviours of each other. They are fed milk for eight to ten weeks before we start deciding to wean them. This is based on age, size and whether they're eating enough nuts. Once they're eating two kilos a day, we start weaning them. We put them on milk once a day in the morning in, until they're about fit to cope without the milk full time. So then we decide based on their size, their weight and also how many nuts they're eating if they are going to be able to cope without the milk. Here we have our Rosé Ville. We hand rear them from babies until they're about eight months old. They're on milk their whole lives and they'll go on to once a day milk and they'll stay on that until we decide to send them off. They are called Rosé Ville because they're out in the daylight. They're fed straw and milk which makes their flesh quite pink. It's very good for the butchers and so we sell it in our own butcher's shop. We have a few different tractors on the farm uh, and they all have their different roles. We use tractors for feeding the cows, for growing the crops, for bedding cows and mucking out as well as lots of other different jobs. Uh, so it's very important that we keep the tractors well maintained and up to date because we need to be able to rely on them for every day of the year. Uh, it's very important that they're there ready to run so that we can feed the cows. So we try and keep them in good condition and well maintained. This one is a John Deere, it's about 160 horsepower. It's the biggest one that we've got, but it's a kind of a middle sized tractor. Uh, and we do a lot of the field work with this one. It's got a lot more power than the smaller ones, uh, and it's a bit bigger. It's a bit too big for using around the yard sometimes, so that's why it's good for out in the field.
farm shops are linked between the farm and the general public. We aim to produce as much as we can off the farm to sell through the farm shop and the team in the shop work really hard to produce and display the stock that we have really well. The standards we set on the farm are high, as high as we possibly can and we treat every animal with the utmost respect and time and care that we possibly can. Uh, we're really proud when we can get our milk or cream or eggs or meat onto the shop and tell the customer how we've reared it and how we've looked after it and then they can go home and make a good meal with it.